Hi everybody and welcome to Sit and Knit for a Bit, our weekly podcast with Arne and Carlos and we are as always your hosts. Arne and Carlos. Yes, and this yeah. is the podcast where you <laughs> can sit and knit for a bit with us if you like, but you don't have to sit and knit for a bit. If you don't want to, you can do anything else. You can do crochet, you can do embroidery, you can sew folk costumes, you can do origami. You can drink tea. You can drink tea, you can play with dolls in the dollhouse <laughs> if you like. So there's really nothing uh, that you can or cannot do um, and we're very happy to be here and spend a little, you know, 30 minute session with you guys. Yeah, and I think last week we said we should be in front of the dollhouse and we are. Yes, we're here in we front are. Of the dollhouse. Yes, yeah, so, so. Uh, previously, previously <laughs> in our lives um, we went to Lillehammer. Yeah, and we, we ordered the new Waistcoats? Yes, so the waistcoat fabric waistcoat. in the tartan is uh, ordered. Everybody's wondering uh, what tartan we got. Uh, it's actually very limited. Um, we have a choice of a few, uh, like four or five, and, and uh, I think they're all Sinclair. But we had a little bit of a drama when we came home because we ordered, uh, you ordered your fabric and I had my fabric and then it was different fabrics well and then you were very back and forth should I actually have that fabric and I think you were a little bit obsessed by that that me and Maria in the, who's written in Lillehammer said that this fabric is normally well, no, used no, no, for no. kids no no that's not it no you're okay sure? so when when we were looking at the fabrics <laughs> as I was saying we, it's the Sinclair tartan for the waistcoats that is used in the traditional folk costume here in, in Gubransdalen um, and the thing was um, there's not a big selection. There was one hand woven. Um, that was uh, that, that was a thousand dollars. So that was like out of the question immediately. And then the others were reasonably priced. The, the 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 different fabrics. There's the standard fabric that is slightly cheaper. And then there were like four um, that are a little bit slightly more expensive. I mean, we're talking about a fifty dollar mm. extra on the on the fabric. And uh, I tried there, I tried one with really big. Um, squares and it had a little bit darker color yeah. and the red and I I felt it kind of weighed me down a little bit Was that and the one you ordered first? No, 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 and no. then I tried the one with the smaller tartan, and the, yeah, yeah, the smaller the... squares in red and I look really, I know I look good in red You um, looked good in that one I looked really good in it uh, when I saw myself in the mirror but then Arne and Maria said well this is the standard one uh, and, then the, and then Arne said yeah this is the one all kids wear yeah. And, That's what I said. And then, while I was taking off the waistcoat, I, th I was thinking, I want to look at the others. Um, so I went to look at the others, and then I had my eye on one, and then Arne chose it. And then I felt that if Arne chooses that, I can't choose it. So I ended up with the standard one that the kiddies uh, wear. <laughs> and then when we got home, um, I was thinking about it. I was saying, it's ridiculous. I mean, we've got the same trousers. We've got the same stockings. We're going to have different garter bands. And, and I, my jacket is white, your jacket is, is black. If I want to have the same waistcoat as you, mm -hmm. why shouldn't I? So I called Maria and told her I've changed my mind and now I owe her $50 for the difference <laughs> in the fabric. But I'm getting the same waistcoat um, as Arne is. Yeah. I thought the one you picked the first time also was nice, but it's, yeah. uh, you see a lot of it. So, yeah, and, yeah. The, and the thing with the one that you got is that the squares are slightly larger. Yeah. They're a little bit smaller with the standard one, and I wanted I wanted the squares to be a little bit larger. Yeah. So, but it's so typical. I mean, I have my eye on something, and then Arne picks it. It happens um, <laughs> nine out of ten times. It happens, and believe it or not, I'm the one that has to cave in and give up. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, no, no. Don't apologize. It's just the way it is. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I'll let you have anything. Okay. Okay. okay thank yeah. you. Yeah. And then we had like we had got some tips for the trousers because we we had to start working on the trousers. Yeah. So we've been doing. We start started on the trousers this week. Yeah, but we've been busy. It's uh, been busy this has been busy. a very busy week. Uh, well, half of last week and and half of this week have been incredibly busy. So after going to uh, Lillehammer to get the um, the fabric for the waistcoats, which by the way will only be delivered to us in January or February, so we won't be able to show you this year. But anyway, it's been so busy that we've only done. Well, we haven't done much, have we? Not really. On the trousers. No, we have done. The Pasquals. Yeah, you, I can show mine because I've done less. So, yeah. so then you can show uh, what the finished result will I be. I haven't done Pasquale pockets for 20 years. Yeah. But I think they came out really nice. And then, yeah. so this is, be careful with the tea. So far, yeah. this is what I've done. Um, it's difficult to see because it's a black fabric, but there is a, uh, there's a pocket there, you see. And uh, so I've done this and... Uh, you can do it like this. 
has come up like this. Yeah, so <laughs> this is a, uh, whoops. It's a strange pocket because the, the pocket is like on separate pieces that is under the mm -hmm. front of the trouser. So when you open your trouser, you can see the kind of the pockets hanging behind there. Yeah, so, so anyway, I've got these done. Um, and then Arne, you can show. So I'm, I'm ready for the... Um, I folded the fabric now, so the pocket is hanging under like this, and there's the passepoil. Like, so the, the pocket goes like this. And then this is hanging down, and now we are ready for making like an edge here, like mm. a piece of fabric. And yeah. I think the rest now will be quicker, because this is kind of the hard mm -hmm. part. Where's the other one? But it was really fun. We haven't done this kind of like Pasquale pockets for, I think it's twenty years. Yeah, yeah, it's a long time. So long time that we haven't done yeah. this. But I think like maybe tomorrow. I think we can do a lot mm -hmm. if we start early when the sun comes and the light gets yeah. lighter. Then we can do a lot tomorrow. I think so. I yeah, hope we fingers crossed. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's been um, it's been a challenging uh, week. Uh, what we have been doing well. As you can see, there's not much done in the trousers, but I do believe we'll be finished by Christmas. Yeah. And I've been... Even though I know that we're going to have to do a little bit of correcting, things, yeah, yeah. That, things that have gone terribly wrong. Um, and also like... Because I'm sure there's going to be something that goes wrong. The, it said in the instructions that you actually have to put it on and fit it before you do the side Correct, and yeah. stuff. So mm -hmm. we have to... We have to try because yeah. you always want to do some changes. Absolutely, so. yeah. But anyway, it, it is looking pretty good, um, and I'm sure that we will be finished by uh, by Christmas Eve, and I'm sure we're going to be modeling our uh, <laughs> our our, our um, shirts. We hope if our not trousers. To put on the black trousers. No, no, no. We're going to be modeling our shirts, our waistcoats, the 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 sat or the, the brocade ones. We're going to be modeling the trousers, the stockings, the garter bands for you guys to enjoy. Um, I'm sure that's going to happen. Mm -hmm. But not the, the jacket. jacket probably not we have to do a lot of hand there's a lot of stitching of the inner fabrics by hand mm. um, pretty much somebody commented it's like doing a Chanel jacket in a haute couture atelier and that's precisely what it is it's high high end tailoring yeah. what we're doing here so there's gonna be a lot of work um, but I think we're gonna succeed um, even if the jacket will take will take longer yeah. Yeah, and other than that, we've been pretty busy uh, setting up everything for uh, sit in it for a bit Christmas countdown, mm -hmm. which will uh, start on December first. Uh, we already have set the scene, the stage. We've staged everything, um, and um, it's looking pretty fabulous. I would like to say, yeah, nice colors, huh? Very Christmassy. Very Christmassy, <laughs> but not American Christmassy. <laughs> it's more, it's it's a little bit more uh, because Americans like a lot of the uh, green and red and. And we don't have that much green in our in our stage, not much, except for the Christmas no. tree, obviously. Yeah. But we've got like um, this is like how we do it. Yeah, Christmas. we've got like nice reds and greys. Um, it's a nice uh, scaled, uh, uh, pared down, color color theme. Yeah, a little darker, um, but very very much uh, what we love. Minimalistic. Well, no, <laughs> that's the only <laughs> thing it isn't. And yeah, if it would have been, um, if it would have had the American style, I believe it would have been more um, a lot a lot more green. Uh, than we're doing. I mean, except for the tree, obviously, which is green, but there will be more green, I don't know. green and red. Yeah, I'm, I think that that's very typical there. They like mm -hmm. mixing green and, and red quite a lot. And then we prefer red and, and gray. We I haven't think. done Christmas in America. No, we never, we never. We've done Thanksgiving. We have, yeah. We've never done Christmas in America, but we have done Thanksgiving. Um, we did that last year. Yeah. Is thans Thanksgiving around this time? Or yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanksgiving is tomorrow. Tomorrow. For the okay. American yeah. um, So people. we were... Where, where did we do Thanksgiving? We did in Thanksgiving at Peggy's house in uh, Fredericksburg, Virginia, Virginia, and it was a hoot. <laughs> it was so, lovely. Well, yeah, it was a hoot. So nice. But the food, oh my god, it was so much, so much food, and we were like stuffed. We, well, were, we stu were like the turkey when we left. Stuffed and tired. Um, <laughs> I really wanted to go to. I, I just wanted to borrow their sofa, Peggy's sofa, <laughs> and sleep for an hour. <laughs> it, was like, <laughs> it was so heavy. <laughs> yeah. You know what they say? Heavy. I mean, my mom says that you're not. You you know you haven't had enough until you have to undo the the button of your and pant. No, then, that's that's then my then mother and that, that that was your mother's philosophy too. That she really they really want us well fed, don't they? Yeah. And uh, that that was Peggy as well. <laughs> uh, she had she had a very moist and juicy uh, turkey. Yeah. I yeah, actually, actually uh, normally when we have like turkey when I had turkey before it's never been like that because 
Normally, when we have turkey, it's quite dry. But yeah, yeah, yeah. This one was really. Yeah, yeah. It was really nice and moist. And then the the sweet potatoes and the all the trimmings. I think you call them the pecans and the um, the so cranberries and so yeah. It's like a it's like a buffet, really. You just go <laughs> and and serve yourself. It's um, like the last meal. <laughs> yeah, but then there was a th I think there was a little cultural difference uh, there because um, everybody went and served themselves. Um, and we've been taught in Scandinavia to to be very humble, so um, we don't actually put not the, not, much. not much on our plate because because you are expected to go back a second and maybe a third time as well. So so we're very very um, modest yeah, we, with what we, we put. You know, we, like a little piece of turkey. So it looks little, nice on the yeah, plate. it looks nice on the plate. We don't and, want to have that pile. Yeah, and, and, and then when, <laughs> and then it was funny because uh, <laughs> after everybody had their first serving, the they kind of cleared everything away, and, and then um, we were like. Well, you know, it, no, 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 it was really good because I, I, I was actually full. Yeah, I was full too, but it was different. So I was thinking like... Well, you said you were stuffed. I was stuffed, but still it was different because normally what we what yeah. we used to is that people, they eat and then to be polite, they take a new round. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so that's why we had less on the plate because we yeah. were waiting for that. Yeah, we had less round. on the plate, but we had a little bit but of everything. But then we were so full, so we couldn't have more anyway. Yeah. So I, I don't think we could have taken more. Yeah, yeah. But that's the cultural difference. Yeah, a little bit of everything still amounts to a lot of food. <laughs> so food. So we were full. We were stuffed. Mm -hmm. And I think that actually was a good thing because if we would have gone a second time, I would have been more than you stuffed. Wouldn't have I would have, it because I would have probably, uh, I, I would probably have to roll out of the house yeah. or but not, yeah. or not eaten mm. um, my food. So it was okay. It was a nice experience because we never done it before. Well, so it was... in, in America, yeah. we've done it in Norway we several times. We've done it in times. Norway because sometimes people do it in Norway now, but that's not tradition. No, it's not a Norwegian holiday, it's probably but, a new tradition but we have Norwegian friends who do Thanksgiving and we've been invited a couple of times yeah. and, um, and they try to do it as much as as realistic as possible with the turkey the yeah. stuffing the sweet potatoes and, and all those things all those and things. i have to say i think that a lot of the americans i've spoken with um have, you know or I, I would say all all americans i have spoken with say that um thanksgiving is their favorite holiday mm -hmm. and i believe it's because um america is such a the united states is such a melting pot of yeah, of people and religions and you know christmas is for christians and hanukkah is for for jews and uh, you've got Ramadan for Muslims, but yeah. with Thanksgiving, everybody can join in. Yeah. It's like a, the one holiday that unites but the United Norway, States. I think most people join in for Christmas, no matter what background you have. Yeah, because well, it's a holiday, well, and it's... people eat their food, and they have well, they have the the time off. off from work. Yeah. So, so so yeah, definitely well, moose moose. There's a moose. <laughs> there is a moose coming. Yeah. So what else has happened, Carlos? Um, okay, so uh, so we've got a little bit of the full costume update. Um, oh yeah, thank. Um, we want to wish everybody in uh, the USA a happy Thanksgiving, and we hope that um, that you have a lovely holiday. Um, another thing. Oh yeah, another tradition that has come to Norway that I don't really uh, that I really don't like. I have to be honest and say this is the Black Friday. Uh, mm. Black Friday. We did not know what that was until twenty. 14, I think it was. Yeah. And after 2014, now we have that here. And I really don't approve <laughs> but you know, of, of that. <laughs> a lot of people get fooled on the Black Friday because I heard that like some some things you buy, they're actually more exactly. expensive yeah. on Black Friday. And then they just put them down. They, no, they actually... Yeah, they raise the price and they, then they put them on sale. Yeah, because it's... But it was actually more... Yeah. It was cheaper before Black Friday, but then since it's Black Friday, people are easy to fool. Yeah. So they go and they buy because they think it's cheaper because yeah. it's said it's cheaper, but sometimes it's not. Yeah. But anyway, so, the Black, whatever Black Friday is, I wish it didn't come to Norway, but it's here unfortunately to stay. And the one thing I'll never do is shop uh, for stuff on Black Friday, neither that's online a, do nor. Do you think people do it this year? I think well, yeah, this year they'll do it online, won't they? Yeah, yeah, Every all course. the merchants yeah. are, gonna, are gonna make their special deals on uh, on the internet, and mm -hmm. the internet is probably gonna crash. Um, yeah, and and I'm glad that we're showing sit in it for a bit on um, on Wednesdays because we can avoid the mm -hmm. the whole Black Friday. But nightmare. talking about uh, like doing good deals and stuff. Oh yeah. I have to tell this story, but this is so funny because okay, I, so we've been shopping uh, because the, you know, like a lot of a lot of you are probably seen that we collect polar bears, those porcelain polar bears, and I was like, I did 
or I thought I did a really good bargain and I wanted to, to surprise Carlos because yep. we both love those polar bears and I found on the internet there was this polar bear he's like he's he was standing almost like this one yeah people do comment these polar bears a lot they're from Royal Copenhagen they're antique um, not antique they're from like the 50s uh, some are newer and some are older. Uh, you can see no the no stuff. they don't make these anymore I believe I think yeah it, but some are older and some are yeah. not so old so. but they're quite beautiful I mean look at the mm. look at the color and look at the uh, expression on yeah. his face so what I was thinking was like I found this kind of polar bear it has almost the same position. It was standing a little bit different with this one, but I was so happy. Because, and he told me about it too. Yeah, I, I said, I did a bargain. I found a new polar bear and it is totally different from this one. Yeah, he said, it's amazing. It looks just like, and then he brought this one to me and said, yeah. it looks just like this one. And I, I found was like, a new wow. one with a new pose. Yeah. And and then, and then he, it was I, a good price. Yeah, and then he made me look at the internet. We had to verify that it wasn't the same. And they have actually, he's got his stamp on his bum. And, and the new one that Arne bought has the stamp on his foot. So we thought, okay, it's definitely not the same. And the foot, so, feet are different, like in the back. So Arne ordered it. And then we, we are going, we're a few days, like a week after, we're walking with our dogs. And I wanted to surprise you. And then I got a surprise. Well, yeah, because we were, yeah, but we were walking <laughs> with the dogs and... Um, and suddenly we go back to our mailbox and there's a small package there. Well, I freaked out. I was thinking, what did we order? Like, this must be, this must be something different. And then so, we took the package in and we opened it. So this is what we thought we were ordering. <laughs> and this is what we got. <laughs> But yeah, <laughs> it was. I did. I, I thought I did a really good bargain. And to put it this way, con considering how much you paid for it, this one is more expensive than this one. <laughs> so That's now I'm sure. going to wait until we come can go back to Copenhagen and yeah. actually see them in real because I forgot to check the measurements yeah. because I didn't know they were so small. Exactly. But this one can fit in the greenhouse well, in the dollhouse. Well, it can. Yeah, maybe maybe it should be. Uh, maybe it should move there. there. It should move there. And but anyway, we'll back to the lesson learned, never uh, order anything unless you know exactly the dimensions. And uh, and yeah, that's... That was so disappointing. Well, it's still very cute. And, and, and now we found a place for it. Yeah. It, can, uh, it can be in the dollhouse. It can move into the dollhouse and, and live there. So, so uh, this is me shopping. Yeah. So and anyway, no Black Friday for us. But um, that being said, uh, I do have to say that we are um, spending a lot of money now um, online. Because what else is there to do? And huh? it's kind of exciting. We've like been every ordering. Week there are DHL <laughs> yeah. or the postman. Yeah, we order all sorts of items online. We've ordered. Um, okay, so. Um, all the Christmas gifts. There's another story here. Um, <laughs> so Arne mentioned um, casually uh, in one of the podcasts that he had ordered a Christmas gift for me. And, um, and you also talked about well, your order. Well, no, because I, I actually I lied. I said that I had ordered one, but I didn't. Oh, you didn't? No. So after we came back from Lillehammer, I went online and I ordered a Christmas gift for you. So it must have been the day after you ordered yours. Um, and it was going to be shipped with DHL. And I was like, kind of, you know, looking at my email, kind of checking my, you know, mails. And usually DHL does send us a, an email or send, send an email when, when the day they're going to deliver. So I had this whole plan how I was going to lie and and make sure to make sure to uh not you know I, I was actually gonna because also with the pandemic nowadays um dhl calls so i was thinking they'll call and i'll tell them that um they can um they can deliver uh today but i, I wanted them to deliver it on, on our mailbox or near our, our mailbox and i was thinking i'd go and meet the dhl guy but not have any contact with him just meet him there so uh, yeah, the days go, and and suddenly I get the pling in my um, in my um, oh, our phone, the SMS, and a couple of uh, like half an hour after, the DHL guy calls, and he says, "Hi, I have a package for Mr. Uh, Zacherson, Carlos Zacherson," and I said, "Yes, that's me." He said, "Well, are you home?" I said, "Yeah, I'm home," and uh, but I, I this time I want to uh, to ask a request. I said to him, I said, "But hang on, hang on, this is really strange." I said, "What?" There's also a package for a Mr. Arne Neure going to the same address. Is that correct? And I say, yeah, that's that's when correct. I, and you told me that's when I freaked. Well, out. that's when you. Well, that's when you're listening in on the conversation. And then suddenly Arne is in the kitchen, like, what's going on? What's going on? And I say, and then I know that I can't say anymore that, um, you know, go to the mailbox or whatever. So I say, okay, no, we're home. 
Uh, we're gonna just go out uh, a walk. How, how long is it gonna take for you to get here? He says, I'll be here in like 30 minutes. Say, great, we're gonna go out with the dogs and um, if we're not there, just dump them on the on our stairs and we'll pick them up. And then Arna <laughs> said, what is it? I said, well, um, there's a del DHL delivery for me and one for you. And then he got a little bit. Yeah, that was, uh, uh, uh. So we go out with the dogs. And then the DHL car. Arrives. Kind of when we're around the corner, in, we're entering the forest and we're kind of around the corner. Arne says, oh, look, <laughs> and there's Carlos the just DHL turn around car. There. And he like, he go, try to go quick. He's not running, but you're walking very quick. And then I understood. Uh, so I just turn around. The dogs, me, all of us, we were just running. No, it started with me uh, walking very quickly yeah. and then kind of walk running. Walk Arne running. saw that and then he started walk running to catch up with me. The dogs were following us. Then I started to speed up and I started running. Running, and then Arnest started running um, and then we kind of met the DHL car it was leaving our house and we were, were walking or running in and so we both stopped and we waited <laughs> kind of like oh uh, there's nothing going on here and then we just ran um, and and Arne actually ran ran a little bit faster so he got to the packages first and just grabbed one I just looked for my name and I saw my name and yeah and then the I grabbed the other one and then um, yeah and then, and now I've hidden it and I can't remember where I hid it which is good You're better find out no 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 I um, I'm not gonna remember until uh, I've wrapped it I remember that and then I put it in a in a smart place and now I'm just hoping it will turn up but how was the chance for like we ordered something on the internet and it comes on the same day and I got an SM I got like a message on mail that I could pick the place for where I should pick it up yeah but that's after if DHL can't deliver that's what you didn't understand oh. because <laughs> I picked the shop further up in the valley so I could like I have to go to the store to buy some wood for yeah. some carpet thing and then the shop is next to it I know it's crazy so uh, anyway anyway long story short um, I don't know what he's giving me for Christmas um, and I don't think he knows what I'm giving him but I it may come from the same store uh, I, I just have a feeling I don't know why we'll see <laughs> or maybe not it was a different tape on the package I, I saw that really so I don't think they're from mm. the same place I think you have your from another place okay we'll see We'll see. Uh, I mean, you know what I like, I know what you like, so... <laughs> if, if Worst case scenario, we bought the same thing. Maybe it's a new polar bear. Uh, yeah, maybe. Maybe it's... A, yeah, you know, it's it, it could be. It could be. It could be. Yeah. And maybe you bought the same polar bear as I bought you. Maybe. But we won't know until Christmas Eve, will we? Because yeah. in Norway or in Scandinavia, we celebrate Christmas Eve, not Christmas Day. So we'll open our packages sometime in the evening on December 24th. Probably sometime after dinner there's gonna be a young there's gonna be at least one kid around if we get to celebrate christmas the way we but plan. we got we got one what you call so, that third gob a pre-gift we got pre-christmas gift pre-christmas gift that yes. came also this week and you have yeah yeah and we also ordered um we also ordered from our friend in florence we know this antique dealer in florence and we ordered a lovely little sculpture a little bust uh, that that was irresistible um, which don't, is, don't talk about that because there is also a Christmas gift there for a friend if she wants. yeah and we ordered a Christmas gift for our friend but there's a, a little bust there that it's that but that is kind of like that's a that's a late 50th birthday gift for me and a late uh, birthday careful, gift careful for now. you and uh, and yeah but, but show, show the nice thing though. yeah but there's stuff coming in every day so yesterday we got delivered um, again DHL and uh, Da -da 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 -da. We got the Dolly Parton book. We're so happy. This yes. book is so beautiful. It is. Yeah. And and the pictures are so nice. Yeah. Do you wanna? So this, I'm gonna, we're gonna read this in, during Christmas, because this yeah, is. Yeah. Look at her. This is so nice. Oh God, she's amazing. Do you wanna show any? Do you have any particular? Oh, there was some beautiful picture? pictures in the beginning. I, I look. Um, this is a picture that. Like when she was a kid and she was singing in this box, she made her own microphone mm -hmm. thing. That is so cute. Yeah, that's very cute. Oh my, oh, I love this. <laughs> so this, this is, you know what, this is something I imagine Arne could have done. You yeah, would, I could have. Yeah, you, this is, this is you. This is, 
Now I understand the connection. What you call that in English? A can? A can. Because we use those as telephones, I remember. Yeah, well, we had so did one, we. one can each on the, this thread. I don't know. I don't remember if it worked. Mm. But this book is really beautiful and I'm looking forward to reading it because there's like the story behind the songs, yeah. which I find very interesting. So we're really happy. Yeah, very happy. It's going uh, into the Dolly Parton collection. And that's not the only thing we received this week as well, what right? What did we get? Well, that uh, that thing that we wanted to to, to do the Tale oh. of Magnus. So we, so anyway, before we show that, we've yeah. got our, our little dollhouse here. This is dogma. Um, we have we're like a little yeah. bit all over now. And we've done a lot of updates uh, from our dollhouse. It's uh, it's been here. We've been built. Arne has built it from with his own bare hands, and um, it's been done uh, since t 2017. It's uh, three years old now, and there's a Magnus living in here somewhere, is there, isn't there? Oh, and he's wearing his Christmas sweater. Yeah. So Magnus is our, our little knitted mouse um, from um, our book Knit and Crochet Garden. Um, the book went out of print, um, I don't know when, and at the moment uh, it's not being reprinted. So, And a lot of people have been writing to us to ask us for if it's possible to, to get the pattern for, for the little Magnus garden mouse. And um, yeah, I got a, I got an email a couple of weeks ago, and I totally forgot about it. Um, and then um, I ended up actually, oh, I totally forgot that we were gonna put the pattern online. And uh, I got that email; it reminded me about it. So mm -hmm. I've done it now. So if you want to get the pattern for Magnus, the little cute mouse, it is available. Um, it is available in our web shop. So anyway, um, the tail of the mouse is done with i cord. Mm -hmm. Um, or we've done it with iCord, and then we've always looked for these little, these little things, um, these little tools to because actually. Because we heard there was like a machine or something. Well, that first we got use. the wooden one, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, the stick Lisa. Yeah. I don't know what that is in English, but like, you know the one that, like the cone with four nails, and then you use a crochet hook. Yeah. But I, I didn't like it. I didn't like that, and then we heard like it was like a, something you could use, and then we found it. Yeah. So we ordered it. So. Well, actually. We, we talked to Prim about it and they told us they had one, they so we ordered one. it. So we got this also this week. This a, is a... A knitting mill. Knit, knitting mill. And with the knitting mill... Strickemüller. Yeah. And with the knitting mill, you're supposed to just insert the yarn and then crank the handle. And then it should be... Should we open the, the, it to see if we can use yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. The tail should be done um, automatically. Um, and it will take just a few... Because, I mean, I-cord is... Do you think it's... Fun doing the I chord? I think it's kind of. I think it was fun the first times, but then it became yeah. a little bit boring. And I mean, you knitted all that, all those knit garlands, those Christmas, the tinsel yarn. That's remember? That's fun. Oh, that's fun. So you're not gonna do the the the, the garlands on the knitting mill? I don't think we can. Oh, thank know. goodness. We have to try because <laughs> they're not my favorite. <laughs> but the garland, I I think that's more fun to knit with hand. hand but this is. The, the tail is like the finishing and then you feel like you're almost finished with the mouse yeah. and but it's not the problem it's not the long tail okay so so um, here's the machine mm -hmm. there are uh, okay so we are like from in norway and norwegians are famous for not reading manuals but i am very good with languages and that includes picture language so Okay, so but I guess that we have. So I'm going to read it quickly. We have to take it out from the box. And okay, so you're supposed to you're supposed to detach that metal on the bottom. Mm -hmm. That one goes off. Just pull it off. That's not easy. Okay, let me try. <laughs> I'm afraid. There you go. Just uh, okay. That's you, so all you needed to do was this. <laughs> There you go. There's like a metal thing here. I'm afraid I'm gonna... And then you're supposed to put the yarn. The yarn is supposed to go okay. through here and down and up the other side. Then you're supposed to attach this. Yarn. And then pretty much, um, I think then you just crank. Or let me see if there's something else I forgot. So you're supposed to put the yarn through the hole. But that, then I need a needle because this Yeah, you is... need something with weight. Otherwise it will, you'll struggle. So if I take this Let's see. needle... Oh, 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 hang on. Oh, hang on. Okay, we're not going to do this, but you're supposed to open it here. You see? I put it on the table. And then you can, um, and then you can put it on a, on a table. We don't have a table high enough for that here. But yeah, you're supposed to put it in and then you go up again. So that, And these hooks, these are just like on the knitting machine. Yeah, they're exactly like a knitting machine. And there's machine. four of them. So it's yeah. like Strickelisa. 
You see there, there's four hooks, so, and then this goes on the this goes on the table if you have one. But I suppose you can hold it. I mean, just for demonstration purpose. So let me see. So I put put yarn on the needle, and then the, this should go to. Hang on, let's see. Uh, so it goes up there, and then you bring it out. Oh, I I I go first here. Oh, it looks. Remember, it looks like... I'm, uh, I'm I do it the Norwegian way. It you looks don't... like there's a magnet in there. Oh, Look. oh, you got it. You got uh, it. Through. Uh... Perfect. Okay, so that's two, and then and I guess then, this should go. Yeah, it needs to go uh, through the track, and it needs to go through here as well. Those things, like this. Yeah, let's see. But and this is what do we do with the tail? Oh, the tail! You have to attach the this the so weight. This, the, the, the piece you took off. Can you hold this one? Yeah. So oh. the piece, piece you took off is like a weight. Mm -hmm. So this goes down. Yeah, you just, I don't know, do you tie it or... Oh, there you go. I don't know, maybe I just go a little bit around. Okay. This is... And then it looks like you're supposed to position the thread. You see, you're supposed to position the thread here. I think I make a knot. Yeah, whatever. I think you can do anything you want. I think I do it this way. So, and then you... And then look, you position the, the thread on needles. Oh, sorry. On needles two, one, two, and four. So one, two, and four. I guess so that can be any one. One. All the needles. Two. Oh no! Wait, hang on. You put it on one, on one and two, mm -hmm. just one and two, and then once you start cranking it, it will do the job all by itself. So. Uh... Oh, you don't even have to do that. No, wait, wait, wait. You have to put on this one. This was a little bit... But you don't even have to do that. You just start cranking and it goes in automatically. But have you knitted anything now? No. Can we pull this up so it's pull, closer? Pull, pull, yeah, pull it up as much as you can. There okay. you go. And then? And then I think if I do this... So if I hold it... Yeah. Oh, that is so cool. Go closer. Can you see it? Wait, wait. No, no, it's going the wrong way. No. No, it's going on the outside? Oh, no, it's, it no, isn't. No, it's, it's going down. Look, I think it's knitting now. It is, yeah. That, this would be in there. But oh, sorry. It's probably easier when you put it on the table. Let's see what happens. Something is coming out. Are you it's sure? Going, it's going yeah, yeah, it's working, it's working, it's working. Put it closer. Wait, hang on. I just want to... I just want to see what I'm doing. <laughs> but can you stop? No. Because this is getting so long now. Can I just make this shorter? Okay. But there's nothing coming out yet. Oh, this is exciting. Oh, look. I think I'm going to be doing a lot of tails from now on. That is so cool. Yeah, but where is the tail? <laughs> <laughs> but it is, is, something is moving. It is? And it is knitting. Are you sure? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, this, it, this it one, is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, oh, 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 oh. Look, it's, it's coming. coming. It's, it's coming. coming. Wow, look. this is like how to knit the look. tail of Magnus in uh, just a few minutes. Oh, fantastic. That is cool. Okay, I'm in a very uncomfortable position holding <laughs> this thing up for everybody can to see. Can you stop it a little bit? Stop. And I can make this shorter. I think we should hold this one. I think we should make shorter the, for the tail. Yeah, but I want to... Oh, I, I just want to have a look at what I've done. I mean... I've never knitted a tail this quickly. Oh. Look, look, that is so cool. No, the other way. So yeah. And now it's really cranking up. I think that that's oh okay. It, I did something yeah, wrong. You went the wrong. But anyway, way. look. Is that you call it knitting mill? Or? Yeah, knitting mill. Isn't that cool? And then I did something wrong, so we Let's have to we have to take it off. But Let me try. oh, because I went the wrong way. You went the wrong that's way. That's why, yeah. There you go. No, pull. Cool. Anyway, very cool. Yeah, here, um, yeah, I went the wrong way once, so don't do that. Don't go the <laughs> wrong way. You have to kind of uh, turn the handle against you, so, or to sorry, not against you, towards you, so this way. And if you do it and you do it constantly, you will get a tail. This was really funny. Just like Magnus's uh, tail. So that's pretty cool. Um, I think I like this. And it was easy when you, when you thread it with the needle. Mm -hmm. See, now I can do one. This is funny. Yeah, well, not funny. It's fun. This is fun. Yeah. 
I'm Perfect. Try. So uh, anyway, um, it is a great tool. I'm gonna have to send Prima a, a thank you note for sending this to us. Uh, it is what we were looking for, actually. We've been looking for something like this for a long time. That yeah. wooden one, really, with a crochet hook, I did not like that. No, I think that was a little bit kind of boring. Then it was easier to knit it, actually. Yeah. But this this one is really fun. Mm -hmm. So we're putting a description, uh, we're putting the link in the description down below in case you want to have a check it out. If you do, you know, like a lot of, uh, if you're knitting a lot of these mice, you may want to, you may want to do the tail quickly. I'm going to put this on my, on my desk mm. and I, you know, this inspires me because when you have a lot of these tails, maybe you can do some project mm -hmm. with the tails. Absolutely. You could actually, like if you make a lot of these, maybe you can weave them or knit them. Mm. This is fun. Okay, this is a lot okay. of fun, um, but I think that um, people are desperately uh, awaiting our little fun segment <laughs> that we do uh, every week, uh, our gene or my genealogy story. And I think we have a pretty dramatic episode today. Well, it's, yeah, pretty, yeah, yeah, it's pretty um, intense. So, um, but before that, take a look at this. Oh, Arne, this is exciting. Yeah. So uh, I, lo I love your little uh, oh. your little uh, photo bombing. Yes. Um, so are we going to talk about them today? No. Today I will tell you a story about uh, my great grandparents on my father's side from my grandfather's. Oh, side. and those were, are those from your mother's side? Father's side. From your so father's side, but from his mother's side. His father's side. Yeah, but the ones on the photo. That's in on my grand grand. That's my great grandfather, great great grandfather, and great great grandmother on my father's side, but from his mother. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about his dad. Yeah. So the guy. Were they on taller? The... <laughs> I know. I don't know. <laughs> but but the guy on the picture, his daughter was married to my grandfather. Because okay. his daughter was my ah, grandmother. Okay, get it, get it, I get it. Okay, so, so the stories are about about your great my grandfather's parents. Okay, and what year are we looking at? First, first is from nineteen forty. Okay, because my do you have a date? The, actually, it's nine the ninth of April. So ninth ninth of April nineteen forty. That is a very depressing date. For yeah, that's when, Norwegians. That's when the Germans invited Norway during yeah. the Second World that War. That was the day, the day the Nazis invaded Norway. Yeah. So 9th of April 1940 is something that most yeah. Norwegians will want to forget about. Well, not forget about, but they don't like that date. So my great-grandfather, his name was Christian, and he, he was born in 1864, but he died on the 1st of April 1940. Mm -hmm. And then the funeral was on the 9th of April. Yeah, that's a bad day to have bad a funeral. Bad day, and my father told me that when they had the, fu the after the, fu the, like, the ceremony and the church was over and they were all gathered around the grave. Which is the traditional way to do a funeral yeah. in Norway, even still today. So when they were gathering around the grave, maybe they were singing or maybe the priest was saying the last words, mm -hmm. they heard noise. And then, um, mm, yeah. And then the, all the airplanes, the like German a airplanes, lot of airplanes yeah. came. They came very low over the church, mm. and this really stuck to my father's memory because he was ten years at the time, yeah, he, born in 1930. Yeah, your dad is born um, January 1930. 9th, 1930. Yeah, he was a little bit over ten years. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that was. So that. this is something you really remember because the airplanes came really low over the, the, the church, church. Wow. and that was just when they were finishing the funeral so and this probably, is something that really stuck. And probably we're not talking about one airplane or even... No, there was the several airplanes, yeah. I don't know how I mean, many. we're probably talking, uh, say, 10 airplanes or 20 airplanes. Know, Must have been a lot, right? I mean, the sky would have been full of planes coming into Norway. I don't Norway know how from... many there were, but they were, and they were all over Norway, I guess. Yeah, oh yeah. In the south maybe they started, but it was very scary, he said, because yeah, the whole thing. It's a very special, a special thing to experience when you're a little kid and yeah. you're standing next to the grave and you you burying your grandfather, mm. and then this happened, and they knew, knew there was a war going on yeah, in yeah. Europe, and they were just waiting for yeah, he knew something, obviously. and then 
during the funeral this happened. So that's the one story. And he talked about it when we visited him um, the last time. Uh, yeah. When we visited him after we went to um, after we went to see Maria and buy uh, the fabric for our vests, um, we went to see him, yeah. and he told us the story. Mm. And then I remember. Again. Then I remember also the story. It's an, another funeral. <laughs> I'm into funerals today, because then his wife, my great grandmother, um, her name was Sophia. She was also born in 1864, and mm -hmm. she died in 1955. And my fa grandfather, he was one. Of, I think there were like 12 or 13 kids. Mm -hmm. All of them, except two, was in the area where I grew up. Yeah. One was in Oslo, uh, Chris Christina, and then. He, he had a brother, he went to America, mm -hmm. Johan. He had a farm in North Dakota. Oh. And I wrote, read the story, you know, when you die, they write something about you. What's that? Your called? eulogy. Yeah. I mean, the sword, because I'm. Mean yeah, sword. a eulogy. Yeah. That could be the word of the yeah, day. Yeah, so the, the day of the word, because we are so gloomy. <laughs> the word gloomy. of the day, not the day of the word. Sorry, the word of the day <laughs> today, when we are so gloomy and talking about funerals, is a mean sword. Yeah. Which is a eulogy. M I N N E S O R D. So I read, I read the Minnesot. Okay. And it said when uh, his my grandfather's um, brother Johan went uh, went to America to North Dakota. My great grandmother Sophia, she was had knitted him a pair of socks. Mm -hmm. So he got a pair of socks when he left for Oh, America. that's a nice gift. Yeah. I mean, like, keep your feet warm yeah. and don't forget to write home. And, and they stuff didn't like that. have much to give, so that was probably one of the things sh she could give him. That's You sweet. know, having all those kids, and they were not wealthy. And then, I don't remember when he went to America, but in 1955 he came home. I think mm -hmm. maybe that was the first time and probably the last time he came back Oh yeah, to after he moved to America. Yeah. 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 And then when he arrived in Oslo, he came with a boat. He got the news that his mother had just died. Yeah. Oh, that's and, sad. Yeah. He didn't and, make it on time. No, he didn't make oh. it on time. And then when he came to, um, to go star where, where his parents lived, or his mother lived, and mm. all the siblings, he came for the funeral. And then he also, he, he brought the knitted socks. Oh, what a sweet story. Yeah. So he kept them all those years. He kept the knitted socks for so many years. He probably didn't use them that Did he just know. did he return them or did he just show them and then No, he, he came with the socks. Maybe he used them and then he decided to put them in the cast. The, the, oh, 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 oh that, that? yeah, that's a nice His touch. Stuff. Yeah, the casket, the yeah. coffin. So he so put the, the, a pair of socks with oh. her. Well, that's a very nice story, actually. That's I mean, nice very story. touching in a yeah. way. He must have felt, and then he probably knew that he'd probably never see any. I mean, he w he knew he would never see I her again. I, I don't think he came back. Yeah, and that, and probably he knew he'd never see any of the um, any of his other relations ever again. Mm. And it's then a he sad went. Story. It is. It's sad, but it's very nice that he was able to that he brought. I mean, he he didn't know his mother was going to die, and he still no. brought the socks with him, yeah. which meant that they must have had a big, important meaning to him mm. and maybe maybe he was the oldest, you know maybe so he didn't he didn't go anywhere without those socks even if he didn't wear them maybe know. he just took them wherever he, he went he, he probably he was thinking it's cold so i have to take oh, those okay socks. Uh, maybe it's that way <laughs> i just want to make it more romantic no 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 it doesn't have to be more i think this is and then nice and then story. and then and then full of pain and sorrow he realized that he it was going to be a tribute to her by putting the the socks in yeah. the oh well very nice and and, and? We, and we've met some of the. We met some of the relatives, and uh, that because was, they had, he had a daughter, didn't he? He had one daughter with his last wife, and then he had a lot of sons with the first wife. But the daughter of the. The daughter came two years ago. No, twenty seventeen. Three Except years. Ago. Three years ago, she came to Norway, and she brought her three kids with their family. Yeah. Or their wives and. Her, na her name is Maria. Yeah. And then. Um, and then. It turns out you have a link to I someone you admire. I have a link to Dolly Parton because they told us one of the my how is that my second cousins one of my second cousins said that one of their daughters were actually working in Dolly. There you go. So, so you're almost that related. That brings me actually a little bit closer to Dolly Parton. It brings you closer to Dolly. Yeah, Parton. because yeah. I know you and you know <laughs> I know you and you have a relative that works in Dollywood. Yeah, we are one step closer to one actually meeting closer. Dolly Parton. Yeah, you see? Yeah. By That's the way, how small the world is. By the way, I like my little I like my little fun facts. Uh, do you know that Dolly Parton 
has uh, funded <laughs> one of the two vaccines against COVID. I heard, and that's the one I'm having. Yeah. I'm having anything she's having. Yeah. She's my muse. So she's when they, your muse. We oh, yeah, have, yeah. So when they offer the vaccine, <laughs> Arne is going to say, which is the one? Which is the one from Dolly Parton? Yeah, is that it that one. one? Okay, I'm having that one. And it's written about that in this book, actually. Yeah. Yeah. But I actually because read it in the news song, as well. There's a new song out based on this. There is, yes. And talking about family, because last, I think, last Wednesday? Yeah. We talked about my father and the sweater and the horse and the stuff. Mm -hmm. oh, this is, oh, we have a lot of stories. Because I... I took out that book so, so I can show you the the picture of the my father and the horse and the sweater. So previously in our lives, <laughs> last week uh, when we were doing our Sit In It podcast, we were talking about your great great grandfather. No, sorry, your great grandfather. Great grandfather on the other side. Who may have known my great grandfather or who had a common connection to him. And we were talking about how he was posing with horses <laughs> for, the uh, for the artist to paint him. And then we actually showed you a little picture where you saw a speck that may have been your great yeah. grandfather and then I mentioned uh, casually that oh that's pretty much you know that's history repeating itself because we have done that as well mm. uh, uh, to your father and um, there's a book published on us about us it's only available in Norwegian unfortunately and before you guys start saying why don't you publish it in English it's because it's not up to us uh, we, we only we can we can we can submit a manuscript but the publisher has to publish it. It's not something we can decide. And this book we made uh, with with Tune Tobias. To, yeah, Tune uh, scored out Tobias on a journalist Tobias friend of ours. She was a journalist friend of ours and we wrote the book with her. And it's about our inspiration and stuff. But it's not a knitting book, this is the story. No, there's no patterns in no. it. So this is more like our life story and uh, apparently nobody nobody's interested in that. They're only interested in our patterns. Yeah. It's like they want well, us. Well, we're telling the story now. Yeah, exactly. But now we're telling the story, so it's. <laughs> and good. there's more stories there. So the, this book hasn't been accepted anywhere except Norway, and it didn't sell very well in Norway, did it? No, I think it I sold don't... like four thousand copies yeah, or something. Only in the art and craft shop. Anyway, see here you can see Arne's <laughs> wonderful, uh, well, shall we say, wonderfully eccentric father. He's such a character. And he's a guy who loves horses, yeah. doesn't he? And he's wearing the sweater I made in the eighties. It's a pattern from 1950s, but I use all the colors that were popular in the 80s. So it's purple and pink, and very 80s. I remember, <laughs> I remember this day vividly, and I remember he was not in a good mood. No. It was one of those days. <laughs> he was, uh, he, and it was so warm. It was a very warm a day, and and we had brought the photographer over to the farm, and he did not. He was not having it, and we kind of asked him like two or three times please please and then he said yeah but I don't want to walk all the way there because it's warm so you'll have to drive me remember that <laughs> remember. and then we had to drive him there but the moment he got the moment he the camera just uh, he done a lot of this oh know? yeah the, yeah the moment the camera got on uh, was turned on and the moment he he started posing you know we didn't have to tell him anything no direction no no he's a natural mm -hmm. he's and you know what he's kind of in Norway he is a supermodel yeah. isn't he? Yeah. he he did like this photo shoot with a supermodel Miss World once wow. we can show that later but I have to say since, since we're talking about this mm -hmm. because first I want to say, let's say because we talked about this book yeah Emily Emily Love and I have to explain a little bit because this book is actually is written by a Norwegian one called Ås Enerstvedt mm -hmm. I started to read it now and she is actually writing about Emily Love's traveling in Norway but yeah. she was also in Denmark and in Sweden and we talked about this book in our last genealogy because it was kind of like to illustrate how somebody posh would have come to Norway and uh, how your grand great grandfather would have met some posh lady and not understood her at all yeah. and maybe dri driven her somewhere in the carriage yeah and uh, what was I thinking well, I have to find it well while you find it I can say that the amazing yeah, thing uh, the amazing thing about doing a podcast is that you you'd lift up up lift up a book you mention uh, this lady called Emily Lowe and a couple of days after, you get an email from one of Emily Lowe's um, relations, who you think that, relative, think that is so. who has uh, who who has seen our podcast and who just wanted to reach out to us about that. So um, I think that's so cool. It was a very busy week because we were working uh, on uh, the scenography and everything for our advent calendar. So we haven't had a chance to um, 
to reply you yet, but there's a reply coming soon. So, uh, and thank you so much for reaching out. It's amazing um, that you that you did. So we're gonna write to you um, as soon as we have some time. Yeah, because this book is like it's all the stories from Norway, and then Åse Enerstedt, the is presented by Åse, and then she is explaining the times and how times were mm. when this was written. And I find that so inspiring. And the English title is Unprotected Females in Norway. Yeah, that's a very... And actually, the, her relative wrote to us an, uh, about that, uh, that she had written... Emily Lowe had written a book about that. And you know what that means? Unprotected females in it Norway. It means she came on her own. She, she was a single her, solo traveler. No, she came with her mother. Oh, but okay. when they say it's unprotected females, it means they didn't have any men to escort them to es escort or protect them. them yes. And there was, I started to read it now and I found something really interesting because in, in, her, in the book, some of her tips for traveling is that you should bring the, what do you call that, the pisk? The horse whip? Horse whip, because we you had Bring so, your own, bring your yeah, own horse Because the horse, the horse whips in Norway were so bad, mm -hmm. so you should actually have one when you travel to Norway. And they also said that there was like a lot of kids, like there's normal, there's a kid. I think that was normal, like mm -hmm. what my great grandfather did. They were actually kusks. Yeah, uh, coachmen. Coachmen. Because what, what, what some people did is they hired the horse and the carriage. And mm -hmm. then the person who hired the, the carriage is actually driving it. Oh. But they have that little boy or little kid with them because someone has to bring the horse back. To where okay, it came from. cool. So maybe my great grandfather was actually just sitting there and he had to take the horse back when the client came to his destination. I wish it was like that today, you know, like when we go to the rental agency and we get a car. <laughs> yeah. I mean, wouldn't it be lovely if it came with someone who, who would driver. just sit there yeah. and then when you're done driving, you just say bye and then they can return it and do all that? Sometimes I like would like it if they also drove, especially yeah. in different. In yeah, but that's uh, more a question of money. Money, money, money. Yeah, you, but you have another picture. Well, I don't point. want to take over your stories. No, uh, I'm finished now because I have a lot of stories. We have to save some. But yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot <laughs> of uh, genealogy uh, going on. I'm getting a little bit more interested. I haven't really been up to uh, checking out my background as much as I, I maybe should. Um, and, and I am a very privileged person because unlike many people, I have a lot of um, uh, documentation. There's there's tons of um, sorry, there's tons of photographs. Uh, from my family, from my parents' side of the family, tons and tons, to and they go more. back. They go back way back in the 1800s, like 1860, 1870. We have photo photography, which is really cool. Um, so I should actually show a little bit more interest. And I think next time we do a genealogy story, we haven't decided yet whether we'll do it. Um, we'll probably not do it in 2020. I'm not sure, but because this is the last podcast, uh, sit in it for a bit podcast that we're doing that is not Christmas <laughs> and from and starting Sunday um, our videos are all gonna have a Christmas theme until the end of the year so maybe we won't have the chance to do um, sit in it for a bit normal podcast until 2021 and and maybe we won't do the genealogy story until then uh, but I think that the next uh, the next story we're gonna tell is about my uh, very cool grandmother she's actually really cool and um, she came from a upper, upper class uh, background, but she uh, was a working woman. She was actually a career woman and uh, left her kids. Uh, she didn't raise her kids. <laughs> uh, she wasn't there like a housewife. She wasn't a housewife at all. She didn't leave, leave her kids, though. They had, but, but they had, she had help raising them because she worked. And um, we've got a picture here of my dad and my uncle uh, here. And my dad and my uncle are both modeling uh, knitwear. And this is your dad. That's my dad here, uh, who was a bit older than my uncle. And they are modeling knitting patterns in a magazine. And why they're doing that is uh, what we're going to tell you uh, when my genealogy story is back uh, and when I get a chance to talk about my grandmother and her very fabulous uh, career. Um, <laughs> Which is actually really cool. Mm. Can I say, since we talk about knitting, can I show you what I finished? So. Oh yeah, yeah. People are wondering uh, about that. Because I, I now I have finished my leftover yarn sweater. So, the body is ready. Yep. And I'm ready with the two sleeves. So now it's time to do the connecting. Look, I have the sleeves. So now I, I have actually, to. Do you know what? I actually really like that. Just I love that. Yeah, no, 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 I'm not kidding you. I am not kidding you. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, a, a really cool jacket, like and then and then you put these over the, the jacket, the jacket, like just put that over. Yeah. And I hope it's big enough because I made this sweater from like the old old technique. Mm -hmm. So what I what I, I what I what I knit from is just I have the shirt. And then I do my swatch. I check how many stitches I think I need from for me. And then when I do the sleeves, I just increase until I have half of the number, like I think mm -hmm. we talked about before. Yeah. So you actually, when you knit the sweater, what you actually what you need most is just a chart to see the pattern because the size is actually so individual mm. and I like to do sweaters this way so now I'm ready for sewing all the tails that would be cool and finish this and and do the sticking and stuff and then since I was at it I started a new, new one. a new one because I have to clean all the stuff and this too one, much yarn in our stash we don't have space yeah. for it anymore. and for this one what I'm knitting from is something we made many many years ago Oh, that one. So I'm working with, um, we made a sweater, or this is like a poncho from the, our fashion time. It looks like this, with uh, inspiration from the Satastal area. And here's more of it, like this. This is a picture, I, I collect all the design we do, and I do these books. Mm. And then I, ha I also have the shirt, so I just knit from this part. Very cool. So that's a new sweater. Oh, I can't wait to see it. It'll be very, <laughs> very exciting. I've been knitting Christmas balls now, and I've been, yeah. I've been um, doing, um, I've been doing some knitting now in preparations for our sit and knit for a bit Christmas countdown podcast that is coming next week. Um, so that's my knitting uh, for the moment. Yeah, show um, us the ball. And we're Tell very, us something. yeah, we're very excited about, we're very excited about the podcast. And we've been getting a lot of questions as yeah. well. So we're going to end this podcast today by giving you a little bit more information. So um, the Q&A part two starts now. Um, and I'm going to let Arne, Arne answer a couple of questions. Okay, so uh, bring, bring it on. So the questions are, um, a lot of people are actually, I like to say they're, they're wondering and they're feeling a little bit insecure about the yarn and the needles because uh, we have chosen a new yarn and therefore change the size of the needle. And these people are concerned because in our original Christmas ball to knit book, we have one size of needle. And now uh, for the calendar, we have a completely different size of needle. And they are asking for an explanation. They want to know why. Because different yarns need different needles. And we have just adapted it to what we feel is best. Yeah, because the, the yarn we used in the 55 balls was thinner. So we used a smaller needle and the yarn we use now is a little bit thicker, so mm. we use a bigger needle. But if you have made a lot of the balls in the book, you can always use that yarn and use those needles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, and remember, like we've been all over the world doing Christmas balls with people. We have done workshops all over the world. And even if you give people the same yarn and the same needle, there are so many different sizes because people have yeah. different tensions. So when you make a Christmas ball, remember, you're not wearing it, so no. there's no sizing. And the most important thing is that when you make a Christmas ball and you fill it, if you see the filling through the knit, mm -hmm. then your tension is too loose. Then you should go yeah, down, go on, down the, the size. on the needle size. So let's soothe you a little bit. Now think about this. As long as you follow our pattern, and knit correctly, when you finish your Christmas ball, you will have a ball. It will be round. Okay, yes. that's number one. Number two, think about this. You want to go to the shop to buy Christmas balls to decorate your tree. You go to the shop, they've got like 20 different varieties of balls. One of, some of them are this big, some of them are this big, and so you get to choose, right? They're all round, they're all balls, and it's the same with this with this here it doesn't really matter what yarn you choose um, somebody asked if if you know they couldn't get the DK could they do double fingering weight of course you can, can do anything. but you can actually also do just fingering weight and and use the appropriate needle for that the ball will be smaller and um, I brought the ball that um that I knitted um, and then another ball uh, that I found just to compare uh, what was in 2010 uh, and what was in 2020 and you know, this year we want big balls. We used to do smaller balls in uh, 2010. So here is uh, pretty much the difference. As you can mm -hmm. see, the 2020 ball is uh, slightly larger. It's about 75, no, sorry, it's about 25% larger than the 
ball from 2010 but they're both round and it really doesn't matter so go ahead get the yarn that you really want and look at the wrap and then do the needle that they ask for however if you do choose to use the Rowan yarn that we proposed, the Alpaca Soft DK. We have speci specified the quantities for for 24 balls. And based you on this. Based on this, and you need to follow the gauge in order to not run out. Because if you if your gauge is off and your and your tension is looser, then you will run out of yarn. And if that happens, just go down a size. So we're recommending three and a half millimeter for this, but you could go down to three millimeter as well. Um, although we find that the three millimeter will make them a little bit more compact. However, if you're a loose knitter and you go down to a three millimeter, then it will look like this. But again, it depends on your tension. Yeah. So just try. And so remember, see. balls uh, <laughs> balls come in the same shape, but in different sizes. So just be open to that. Don't overthink these things too much. Um, it's all about having fun um, and enjoying uh, knitting a ball. It's gonna it's gonna look great. Use a, uh, a fingering weight or use a DK weight, or use a, a worsted weight. Uh, if you if you want to do like a lace weight, you'll get tiny balls. Do we have like mini balls here somewhere? We used to. Out. We had them before. Yeah, well, we haven't decorated for Christmas yet, so they're yeah, not. We had the tree, but. Yeah, just the tree, but. Anyway, so use whatever you like, and I'm sure the end result is going to be fantastic. And then there's a little something else about the crystals. We've also been getting a lot of questions about the crystals that we added to our balls. Uh, we were in a celebratory mood and we just happened to find <laughs> the crystals um, in our stash. Um, we started gluing them with crazy glue and then we can't actually remove them because they're super glued. glue. Well, super glue and crazy glue I think is the well, same. It's the same. Um, I don't know if it's actually crazy. Well, super glue anyway. <laughs> and um, and the thing is when we when we glued them, we obviously because the photos have the crystals, we had to we had to write that you can embellish them with crystals or rhinestones, but I want to stress that it's optional. Um, this is optional and we're not showing you where to place them or how many crystals to add because after we glued the crystals, which by the way were from Swarovski and they were gifted to us some 20 odd years ago, after we glued them, I went online to check the retail price and I was shocked because they are extremely expensive and we don't want to encourage anyone to spend $50 per ball embellishing with Swarovski crystals. Uh, if you crystals. like to, you can do it, but you don't have to. You don't have to if you don't <laughs> want to. And then I, I, I actually went and I found out that if you buy rhinestones made of glass in like craft stores, you can get, you can probably embellish a ball for, for like $5 which is a little bit more reasonable, well, it's uh, way more reasonable. But again, it is an expense that we do not feel we can tell people that you have to do it. So the embellishment of the rhinestones or crystals is optional. And because it's optional, we don't want to tell you how many to put on your, on your balls or where to put it. We trust that you all have really good taste and that you can um, figure that out yourselves. And you don't have to either. Like They're looking beautiful even have, without. You can use them without the, the crystals but yeah. since it's 10 years since the book came we've really felt for having something glittering on the mm. Christmas tree because we have something to celebrate. Yeah but in a way I'm, I'm regretting that we actually put the, the crystals on the balls because of all this because people do get a little bit worked up about uh, whether they're doing it right or wrong yeah. and please don't feel press pressured to put the crystals on they are optional and the balls will be just as lovely without. But, uh, it's It should be easy and fun yeah, so exactly. Don't, don't think too much. You know how easy knitting was in the old days. Yeah. Yeah. Remember? Well, yeah. I remember when my when my parents, my mother and my grandmother, they went to the grocery store because they also sold yarn, and when she had found the pattern, she always knew more or less how mu much yarn she needed mm. because she has been knitting a lot, so she had a lot of experience. Yeah. So there was no discussion about that. But sometimes she's asked the store, "Could you please?" put aside like 50 grams or just in case or two balls of the, the, each color or something just just in case because some she just wanted to know that she could have the same yarn with the same color mm. and the store always put that away maybe for a week or two and then she'd come back and if then she needed it if she didn't come back they put it back in the shelves and if she needed it she will, she probably knew like in a week she knew if she needed mm. more if she didn't have enough those times were so 
easy. Yeah, yeah. I so, think a lot of a lot of knowledge has been lost. Yeah, uh, I think people are a little bit too scared about a lot yeah, of Yeah, and a lot of knowledge has been lost through the generations. Um maybe maybe because um maybe because at one point knitting wasn't very popular yeah. anymore and maybe uh people didn't learn from their grandmother or mother for a while and then knitting became popular and now uh, uh, some of the knowledge is unfortunately lost but we're here for you guys <laughs> and we're here to boost your confidence and just you know i think that in the end of the day our 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 most valuable advice to you is don't overthink it don't be confident. Just be yeah. confident Just knit the ball. and enjoy be your happy. knitting. And if you're gonna do the balls with us, don't feel the pressure. Don't feel pressure that you need to keep up with us uh, and you knit know? a ball a day. If you can't do it, yeah. It's better to just enjoy what you can. Don't feel the pressure on the yarn. Don't feel the pressure on the Swarovskis. Um, don't feel any pressure, just enjoy it. And also the one thing that we will recommend in terms of yarn replacement is that I think that the best effect for a Christmas ball is if it's made either in the wool alpaca blend, like 70% wool, 30% alpaca, which is what we're doing this year, or just 100% wool. So go for a natural material and go for something wooly that is a little bit, you know, that you've got that little fuzz because that really looks good. I think a cotton, like 100% cotton for this, um, I wouldn't go for that because it's a little too yeah. shiny. Yeah. And it, it, this, this, the wool and this blends, they actually also, when you steam them, they, they, oh, they love the steam. They're like, they're, it's easier to hide if there's any holes. Hmm. So, but, question Arna, have we been uh, speaking for like uh, half an hour now? I think we have. Probably. A little bit more oh, than that. But but be happy, knit the ball and remember you're not wearing it. Just you're check, not wearing check it. your tension. If it's too loose, just make a new one with smaller yeah. And needles. whether you prefer the smaller ones, use fingering weight. If you want a larger ball, you just use a worsted weight. We've even done balls, where's Magnus? Oh here it is. We've even done balls that are big enough for Magnus to sit on. Um, which this isn't. And that, they are bigger. So you can imagine how, how big those balls yeah. are. So they can be done in any size. Now we really look forward to uh, to doing this calendar with you guys, but we do not want you to stress. Remember, you don't have to keep up with us. It's still going to be an enjoyable podcast. It's not going to be about the balls all the time. We will reveal a ball a day, so it is an advent calendar. It is. But you just take it easy and you do it your way and you do it according to your own skills, according to your own taste. And the most important thing is relax and enjoy it. I think it's going to be a great podcast. Yeah. I have a feeling it's going to be really that fun. That starts on... It will start on December 1st. December 1st. So. Sit in it for a bit. Christmas countdown. We're counting down Christmas. There's going to be 24 episodes because in Norway and in Sweden and Denmark, well, in Scandinavia, we don't celebrate uh, Christmas Day. We celebrate Christmas Eve. So the final ball will be on December 24th. Each day yep. we will reveal a ball and we will tell a story. It's not necessarily a story about, um, about the ball but it's going to be Christmas stories. And uh, as I was saying as well, this is our last sit in it for a bit that is not Christmassy. Um, and uh, from December 1st, it's all about Christmas. But actually, this Sunday, we also have a Christmas episode because it is uh, first of Advent. Advent. So for this Sunday, we are going to show you how to make a very inexpensive and, but, but striking Christmas star to hang outside. I think it's going to be a great episode. I can't wait for you to see it. And hopefully you guys will, you know, do make these Christmas stars for your own homes. Mm -hmm. Should we show, show the block? Yeah. Yeah. So this is this is the block for the day. Oh, that's really nice. I love that. And I think we should call this like maybe it's a snowflake. Because you can you see there's like yeah. around a little motif. If you see the gray, it's another snowflake. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah I see that. Yeah, so the block of the, the, block day, of the day, which is also going to be the final block of 2021, the snowflake. Now, if you go to our website at arnacarlos.com, you will be able to uh, find it there. Just go to the blog, click on Sit and Knit for a Bit, episode 12. I can't believe we've done 12 episodes this, this fall already. Yeah. Yeah. Time has passed really fast. <laughs> Time so, flies. So go to Sit and Knit for a Bit, episode 12. Uh, once you see the photograph of the block, Click on that image and you will be able to download the pattern and then continue reading and you will find all the other 41 blocks there as well. So just download those if you like. It's completely free of charge 
and we can't wait to see what you guys do with your blocks in 2021. This is the last block of 2020, so it's a little bit sad yeah. in one way, but in another way it isn't because now we're going to be revealing 24 balls yeah. starting next week. So we are moving into a new adventure. Sit in it for a bit will take a new form, uh, which is um, actually looking pretty good. I'm not going to say more. I do <laughs> we, tend to say a lot so. when I do start. No, don't spoil. No, I'm not going to no. spoil. And yeah, we can't wait for, for a Christmas countdown to start. We're like two little kids when it comes to Christmas, aren't yeah, we? We are. Are you excited? I'm excited. I'm so excited. I love it. The Christmas tree in the dollhouse yeah. is already up. Yeah, and if you want to do the Christmas tree in the dollhouse, just look for the for the tutorial that we did in 2017. It's how to knit a Christmas tree. And uh, just before we finish, the reason why we did that was because we were gifted some uh, stitch markers in it's silver. Stuck with the yeah. electricity, be careful. Sorry, we were we were gifted with some stitch markers in silver, and we did not want to um, to lose them, so we ended up knitting the tree to put it to put the stitch markers on it. So just go into our YouTube channel and look for how to knit a Christmas tree and you will find the tutorial. Yeah, should we so, stop maybe? I've been think, talking for a long time now. Yeah, I think it's time to finish, but you are a good camera guy. So what I recommend you do, because it's all dogma, is that we just say thank you and see you again soon. And then you take the camera and then you go right in and zoom oh, in. Oh, I can, I can do Christmas that. Tree. So um, <laughs> it's been great having you here. Remember, if you haven't gotten the calendar for 2020, for the 24 Christmas balls, it is now available for everybody on our web shop at arnandcarlos.com. So go there and download it if you want. You can purchase it there. If you don't want to knit the calendar or the Christmas balls from the calendar, it's perfectly okay. You can knit whatever you want, or you can do origami, or you can do breakdance, or whatever you want to do. Breakdance. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and uh, remember to subscribe. Uh, the Arn and Carlos family would love to have you as part of it. Or you can do eye cord. Or you could do the i chord, yeah, exactly. And uh, tick, uh, click on the notification, you'll get that little bell, you know, the ding, 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 that will notify you every time we download an episode. Um, and uh, give us a like or a dislike if you didn't like this podcast. And remember to subscribe. Did you say oh, that? I said all of that. You said that. And we will be back on <laughs> Sunday at 6 p.m. Central European time with uh, our first of Advent tutorial. And on December 1st at 6 p.m. Central European time and then daily, uh, you can enjoy sit and knit for a knit. Sorry. <laughs> you can enjoy sit and knit for a bit. Christmas countdown. Are you excited? Uh, yeah. I'm so excited. Uh, so thank you so much for watching and see you, see you on very soon. Soon. Sunday. Sunday. Bye. <laughs> Bye. So I take the camera. Let's zoom that. Do 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 do. Then you should sing some Christmas music. Well, it's not Christmas yet. Let's do it. Oops. This is the Christmas tree. Good. Join us every day in December when Sit and Knit for a Bit becomes our daily Christmas podcast. We're looking forward to revealing one ball every single day. And if you want to join us, there is going to be a digital Arn and Carlos Christmas calendar with our 24 new balls. All you need to do is go to arnandcarlos.com, go to our shop, and you can purchase the calendar and it will be available from November 22nd and onward. That's when it's going to open, the sales. We're really looking forward, aren't we? Yeah, we are. Are we going to make ball more balls? Well, you can't have enough balls, can <laughs> well, you? Can you? No, not really.